parties. So today's topic, we are going to go over how to ask, obtain, and use testimonials inside of your travel business for marketing purposes. So how many of you guys right now are obtaining testimonials? Like, so after somebody goes on a trip, after you do a discovery call, after some sort of interaction with you guys, are you actively obtaining testimonials? Let me know in comments. Now, what I will tell you is when I first started my, any business actually, my brick and mortar business, when we had a barbershop, and even when I started online, um, I struggled with asking for the review. Um, it just felt uncomfortable to me. However, I had to get over it. And so if that's the way that you feel, you too will need to get over what it's, uh, what's it like to actually ask for it. So I just kind of felt like after, particularly when I had my barbershop, when I would you know, check out people or our staff would check out people, it just sort of felt kind of weird for me to say, okay, do you mind doing a testimonial, right? And I still, this is not the most natural thing that I uh, do or like doing. I just don't like all the extra that comes with the testimonials, but people that are genuinely excited about your products and services really don't mind. So if it's really you who minds asking, you have to step over that fear or that feeling in your stomach. I don't, I don't know if you guys have that feeling, but I certainly have that feeling and sometimes I still do. Um, so what I like to do is not even have to ask for it in person. I let my fingers do the walking and automation do the process for me. So, you know, that's my story of testimonials, but what I will tell you is testimonials are pretty powerful in not only your business in general, but really in the marketing and the positioning of your, you as a service provider and uh, the goat of your business as somebody worthy to actually utilize services. What is the first thing that you do when you interact or you see a business that maybe you've been referred to? I go and Google it and see if there are reviews. Do you guys do the same thing? Because that's like one of the first things, particularly now that majority of my um, interaction is online, I pretty much do all of my uh, research about a business online. So I'm looking to see what other people have to say. Are you guys on Amazon? I do the same thing when I'm about to buy a product. I go and I see what other people are saying about it. And your business is no different. So Really, there are three major reasons why testimonials matter in your business. One, it absolutely instantaneously builds credibility for the person that actually is reviewing or seeing your business. Now, what I will tell you is I'm real quick to say if you don't have a website, that's OK. You don't need a website immediately to be successful in your travel business, but you do need reviews. And I'm not saying that if you don't have the reviews, you're not successful, but it certainly aids in that. And there are so many ways to collect reviews, even if you don't have a website, but immediately it boosts your credibility. So people that are reading it, they're like somebody else who's probably in my shoes sees um, has used this person and they loved them. So I can probably take a chance, right? So credibility is one thing. The other thing is trust. If, you, if you've if you never heard of this saying, there's a saying that people buy from people that they know, like, and trust. Well, 90%, 99% of the people are that are out there that you want to do business with don't know who you are. They don't know you, they don't like you, and they probably don't trust you. But testimonials help speed that process up. Because again, they see some other person that's used your services, got a good result, and they were able, they feel more comfortable about it. So even if you're not comfortable with gathering it, it really ought to be a, a part of your business process to start collecting testimonials. And then it really does, the last bullet I put here is it influences decision making. And it really does, because when somebody is on the fence and they're like, hmm, and, and I'll just ask you your own behavior. When you're when you're out there on the Internet streets and you look at somebody's business that you've never been to and you see, you know, business A and business B. So we'll say travel agency 
A and travel agency B, and they one has a Google listing and the other one does it, and one has reviews and the other one does it. It just helps with the decision to move forward with you. So have no fear if you don't have testimonials and you don't have reviews on your Google My Business page or Facebook page or website, that's okay. The time is now to start asking for them and collecting them. And so let me just see in comments, how many of you guys are actively collecting testimonials as a part of your business? I'm not marketing yet. You're not marketing yet? No, not as of now. Okay, Priscilla, Kazia, Pam, are you guys actively doing any test getting testimonials? This is no. really not, this is not even yet marketing yet. Just are you as a part of your business process, do you ask for your clients to give you a review or a testimonial after their trips? I ask for a review, but I haven't asked for a testimonial. Same thing. Think of them as one and the same. Okay, then yeah, I do that. Okay, so you do, Priscilla, that's good. What's the process, What not process, what's the platform that you do? Do you ask, do you have them fill out a survey? Do you have them go to your Google page? What do you do to get them to give you a review? Well, I'm in between because I was on Travel Joy and that's mm -hmm. where it was and I'm trying to move it over. Um, so I could do request a review I used to have like a form, just like a jot form for my services. And then I asked them to rate the hotel, transportation, other things like that, and then ask for the review. So I'm trying to figure out how I should do that. Awesome. Okay. So you had some process and you used a form to do that, um, to get the feedback from your clients, right? Correct. Yep. And, and that's what I traditionally see is I see a lot of people doing surveys and you said travel joy and, you know, having an after trip survey is really a good idea because if you don't know, you know, how the trip went and you're relying on that um, as a means for which you to get feedback on one, you know, the property and just how that entire experience, you may want to include that as a part of the process, right? Do a survey before you ask them to go to a public forum to do a review or a, a testimonial request. Either way, the feedback loop is important. And so here's the thing that I would say that's really, um, really, really something for you guys to be thinking about is you need to ask. You need to ask and timing is of essence. You wanna ask for them to provide a review of how the trip went and or a testimonial as one and the same thing. And so a couple of examples of this is, you know, for years I've done surveys. I usually do them after my trainings. I used to, um, you know, I do them after my trips. Um, and so we've always used some sort of survey as a communication mechanism. However, the survey really requires you to look at that information and then create some sort of marketing to publish and communicate that. But wouldn't it be nice if you could take that review that somebody did, it automatically show up in like your maybe a review widget. And if you have that widget on your website or your sales page, it automatically updates. That's some of the things that we're going to talk about in today's training. But really, the first thing that I want to say is you've got to add asking for it as a part of your process. Literally, it should be an automation after trip start date you know, X number of days afterwards, you are requesting the review. Now, I'm going to talk about some ways that you can do that in Travel Pro Suite a little bit later. But really, what I want to let you know is do it right after the event, after whatever the event. And if you're doing, if you're doing virtuals, last week, we went over webinars. So if you're doing a webinar, you should ask for a review, you should ask for, you know, a survey of how it went or a testimonial at that time. The point is, is to get people accustomed to giving you feedback in a way that's simple for them to give it to you in a way for you simple for you to ask for it so timing is everything you don't want to wait weeks and weeks days and days after the event because the high of the event, right the trip the the webinar you've done the training you know the experience with you dies off and their likelihood of doing it diminishes the further out it is so timing is really important 
you need to simplify the process. And you guys hear me say that all the time. So the process needs to be simple for you to ask and then also for the person to give it, right? You don't want it to be complicated. You don't want 10, 15, 20, 30 questions, right? Should it feel like a quiz that they've got to sit, sit down and study for if you're doing surveys, if they're doing videos, you want to make it as simple as possible for them to provide the video and then give you, get, send it to you. So simplifying the process, simplifying the ask and simplifying the uh, delivery. And then you want to make the results quickly visible to your audience of people on the platforms that you're on, on your website, social media, uh, web pages, sales pages, all of that, right? So one of the things that we've got, like I was just looking at this yesterday inside of our proposal template, we've got a section for testimonials. This is a perfect place to put testimonials in your proposal as you're trying to sell your trips to people, including what other people have said with working with you is a great idea. Now, Priscilla said something that I think is really interesting is that she's collecting feedback also for um, how the clients um, liked the resort and you know, the information, you know, information and feedback about the resort or the property or the supplier's information. Rest assured that the suppliers are sending out surveys about their properties to the clients as well. Have you guys stayed somewhere? And immediately after you stay there, you get contact information from the supplier. So unless you're going to do something and that's going to help influence how you design your requests for feedback should really be about your business and your services proper, first and foremost, and secondary about the property, just because, again, you're trying to get that feedback for you, not only so it makes you feel good, because let me, I mean, how many of you, doesn't it feel good when somebody says that you've done a great job, right? It just reinforces that you're doing the right thing. I love testimonials. It does stroke my ego, right? And when I'm having a bad day, I look at my testimonials because it helps me remember that, yeah, I'm in the right space. So really what you ask and the purpose of the testimonial, and I'm, I'm using testimonial and review interchangeably. So to me, there's no difference, right? There's a way that you get the, the review or feedback, right? You can do it through video. You can do it through questions. You can do it through free, free form. So the mechanism by which you collect it to me is you have a multitude of ways to do that, but the idea is the same, which it is a request for positive or negative feedback about how you are doing in your business in terms of the way that you deliver and design um, experiences for your trip, for your um for your clients. All right. So making the last point that I'm asking that I'm talking about in terms of asking for testimonials is really the visibility of the results. Like it doesn't do, and, and I'm like queen of this, right? I'll collect it. It's, a, it's in my process. But before we had a tool that would automatically showcase or uh, allow those reviews, I had to do like several steps to be able to get it out to the world. Now those steps sort of go away. I get a review. I can automatically publish it to social media. I can publish it to um, my website because we have a widget and it's already there. All my sales pages automatically get the updates as well. So the, the visibility of the results are also key too. So not just ask. Don't make it easy. You got to do something with them. And that is to make it visible so that it can be utilized for you to enhance credibility and the trust factor that people have with you. All right. Any questions? If you guys have any questions, um, uh, Normie did me a survey. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So a survey is really good inside of it. But again, the objective of the survey, what are you doing with the results? Is she turning those results into social media posts? Is she adding the survey results into um, and adding them to your website, onto your sales pages? So again, we want to do the last part of that step is to make sure that you not only ask, but that you and you make it easy for people to complete, but that you then make it visible and you put that as a part of your marketing cycle to ensure that that visibility. And I'm not even talking one time, like you get a, you get a testimonial um, in your business. You ought to have a regular cycle for which you publish and you talk about 
how how other people think that you're doing a great job. <laughs> like it should be a part of your marketing cycle. So um, I was talking to a client um, last week, actually a couple of clients in the last couple of weeks about their content um, strategy and one of the, and using content themes. And so one of the content themes that you can include as your regular um sort of marketing, your general marketing is wins, right? I, you know, other people may call them wins. You can call them reviews, but it's really showcasing how people who have interacted with you, what their results have been. So adding the survey results, and I do love survey results, but what we end up doing with the survey results is that we take the the comments, so we ask um, open-ended questions so that we actually get sentences and then we convert those into social media posts. We may wordsmith it just a little bit, like, you know, some people's grammar. I mean, I'm the last person to talk about grammar and spelling, right? But to turn that into something that's consumable, turn that into a story, particularly if it's sort of, because sometimes people, they, they write and the information is kind of all over the place. The context is lost because nobody there. So we add the context to the testimonial so that it makes sense when somebody is reading it. So visibility is really the key. So let's talk about where you, and I've talked a little bit already about where you can use this in your marketing, but certainly on your website. So um, we actually have a feature and I'm gonna show you, I'll talk a little bit about this in just a minute. We have a feature inside a Travel Pro Suite that will collect the testimonials and it's, it's done in a widget. And then you can put that widget code on any of your sites, anywhere there accepts HTML code, you can put that widget code into your site. So your reviews will always be front and center on any of your sales pages or any of your pages that you do. You can, like I mentioned before, you can use them in social media posts. So literally when you get a testimonial, the next thing that you should be doing is figuring out, okay, how am I going to showcase this bit of information that I got? How do I write a post about it, a caption about it, and let the world know? Put it on your business page, boost it to your audience or strangers so that people can see you. Using it in social media is very powerful. Creating reels and stories around how somebody had a great experience on your trip is another way to sell trips. So, and it's a very effective way to sell trips. And then incorporating it in promotional material on written material and then also on electronic um, uh, material as well, including it on your brochures, your newsletters, in your email campaigns. Usually when we're doing an email series for an invitation to an event, we're going, and, and if we've hosted that event before, we will use a testimonial as one of the emails that we use to say why a person should join the event. So I'm giving you that as an example because you'll want to do something similar. So if some, if you are doing a promotion, let's say to, I'm, I'm working with a client on their summer cruise for 2025. And um, they did this cruise this year. And so the testimonials, the images that she has from this year promoting her next year trip is going to be a great um, marketing um, a marketing strategy for her to utilize not only the images, but also the testimonials of people that had a good time on the last trip. And, and don't get me wrong. You don't even have to, like most people are like, well, I've never done this particular trip, so I can't use that testimonial. That's not really the point. It's the fact that somebody interacted with you to do a similar type of thing and they had great results. That is really what you want to showcase. So it doesn't matter if you're, you've got a trip to Italy and the testimonial is about a trip to Jamaica. It doesn't matter from a client perspective really what you're trying to showcase is, is that you designed an amazing trip for a client and this one happened to be Jamaica. And now this person is looking at an Italy trip. So it doesn't have to be destination specific reviews that you have. What you're looking for are service related reviews. This is why the questions that you want to ask in your surveys 
are going to allow you to sort of use those reviews regardless of what the destination is. Hopefully that makes sense because that's really a thing that I struggled with when I first started um, requesting and using my testimonials was, well, it's not, you know, the testimonial that I got for this one thing is not the same as the thing that I'm promoting here, right? So I have a testimonial for a service or a product A, and now I'm doing B, doesn't matter. People interacted with you. They had a great experience. You did great for them. You got them the result. And for you all, you're, the result that you're getting people are amazing travel experience. So it doesn't matter if it's on a cruise, if it's a land trip, you designed, got them in and out of town safely, and you created this amazing overall experience from, from, from um, point A to point Z. Does that make sense? So using the testimonials in all of those arenas are really great ways for you to help reinforce the fact that you're the bomb.com. All right, so let's talk about how Travel Pro Suite can help you do that. Um, I'm gonna show you, there's three major things that we can do for you. There is a reputation feature inside of the system, and I'm gonna show you that. There is for our premier users, there is a video pro suite feature, a video pro feature that we just released a couple of weeks ago that seamlessly captures video testimonials, requests and captures video testimonials for our, for your clients. And then we also have review or request review automation available. You can build it yourself or you can leverage the done for you recipes that are available in the system. And if you're on the video, if you're a premier member, you've got the video, um, you've got the video pro feature that automatically has that request automation built for you. So let's talk about what that looks like in the system. Can you guys still see my system? Can you guys still see? Yes. All right, perfect. Thank you for responding. It does help me out. All right. So the first thing is, is when you're on the, um, when you're inside of Travel Pro Suite, if you scroll down, there is an option on the left-hand side that is reputation. When you click on reputation, I think I just saw that my internet is having a little bit of a blip. I haven't lost y'all, have I? No, I still see you there. All right, so if you click on reputation, this is gonna take you to the whole review request feature. All levels of Travel Pro Suite have access to this feature. This is where you can manage your two types of reviews that you can manage. You can manage Google My Business reviews. So if you have your Google My Business account connected to the software, you can manage your reviews here. And then it also will manage your Facebook business reviews. So let me just show you that really quick. So on, let's go to google.com. I'm just going to go to my site and show you where the Google, and I'm also going to go to Facebook to show you on business page. So when you Google your business, and if you have a Google My Business account, which I do, I don't know where it is, Maps, I think it's a good place for it. So you see here is my Google business account and these 10 reviews, these 10 reviews were initiated out of the system. And so when you go here into reviews, these reviews are coming directly from the system. And so they're automatically showcased on my Google My Business review. People can click on them when they go to reviews, they're going to show up right here. So that's one place. So our system will manage all of those reviews for you right there. The other place is, is that on your Facebook, on your business page, there is a review section here. And so all the reviews that people give you on your business page can also be managed in our system as well. So all you have to do is connect in the integration and this should have been something that you did when you first signed up you got your um, underneath the settings underneath integration we would have wanted you to set up the following so let's just go here 
we would have wanted you to set up your um, this. If you guys see this chat, uh, this little pop up that's coming up, Google is eliminating the chat feature on the Google My Business thing. So that's what that pop up is. But you should have integrated your Google My Business uh, business, which is connected your Facebook, your Instagram and um you know, any of your other platforms that you would have done. But primarily when we're talking about reviews, it's going to be Facebook and GMB is what we integrate with here. So those two locations are what this feature on the left-hand side is integrating with. And so in um, when you guys get the replay, I've included in the, um, in that post, you're going to see some specific information on how to set all of that up. We won't have the time to go over each of that, but I've, I've included instructions on how you set each one of the requests, how do you configure the widget and make it all work so that when you're actually sending out a request, it's going to send it out for Facebook or for your Google My Business. This is like the most automated way to do things, right? So if you want to start getting, and uh, you know, a lot of people have said, well, I'm having a hard time with Google My Business. Is it worth it? It absolutely is worth it because you immediately show up locally in your area based on where you are. And then, like I said, what is the first thing that people do when they look for a business? They're looking at reviews. So having these reviews available on your in in the google world right out in the google internet is really good and it does help boost your visibility so surveys are great but surveys are internal to the business you have to do something to publish them out and it still is a little bit disconnected from being you know um I, again, surveys are great and we utilize them, but it, it, it's there's no automation in the surveys in terms of automatically pushing that survey content out to the world in a way that's consumable like this. Now, the other thing that we have done with our surveys, um, I mean, our, um, is we have added our reviews are right down here. So this widget is this is coming from the reviews from both Facebook and from Google My Business. Those reviews are coming right in. I don't have to do anything to get this. I just put this code in on our website. And every time we get a new review, it just shows up in the list and people can just load as many reviews on as they can. We just started using this, this, this uh, feature I want to say the beginning of the year. And so now as a part of our process, as people finish courses, as they finish, um, we need to add that to our events. But as, as things are occurring, we are making the request for people to do it. Now, will everybody do it? No. But what you can do is you can create some incentive for people to give you reviews. Um, I don't know how many of you guys are using more, um, a travel marketing boost um, as incentives, but that's a great incentive to give somebody a free travel voucher where they can leverage that for doing a review. There's all different types of reward systems that you can put in place to encourage people to give you reviews. So this is the one place that you can do this. So this is an overview. This just lets you know in the last six months how many reviews you've got. You've gotten um just last review requests, what the latest reviews are. And then we actually have the feature. This is the demo account. So I don't think this part is set up. Let me get my, um, let me get my, give me a second. I'm going to get my actual live account up. And if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate. Um, Cause I'm about to wrap up to open it up to see if you guys have any other questions? I'm just going to show you what my review, my live review section looks like, which is already set up. I do have a um, question. Yeah. Um, so I have my Travel Pro Suite set up to request reviews uh -huh. from, from Google, but you've got the testimonials tool that you're setting up. How should we process wise do that? Do the review and testimonial, or how would that work? How would that look? So, what would that look like? That's a really good question. Hold that question for just a second, because um, okay. I want to demo, just show that, and then I'll talk to you about kind of how you can intersect the two. Okay. Um, so what I was going to show you is, I think we're in my live site. So 
Now what you'll see is all the review requests that are going out. This latest review request is going out based on automation. Um, we have an automation that automatically based on particular trigger events will send out the request review, same thing that you can do. And to Priscilla, your question, you can decide, do you want a video, what's more important? And really for me, video testimonials are something that I would send out to existing clients like who have worked with me in the past. I wouldn't necessarily, but you could, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's a hard and fast rule. Depends on what you want more of. If you want more video testimonials and you don't want Google My Business reviews, I would ask for only video testimonials. That's what I would do. So for me, I want a collection of both. I want, because I want my SEO to grow on Google. So I ask for video, I ask for Google testimonials um, as our primary reviews like I want reviews from that and then we are going to add on to our existing clients that have events to do video testimonials so it's going to be two I want two different types of testimonials and it's okay to ask for testimonials more than once like just because somebody's done it one time doesn't mean that they can't do it again so let's say maybe somebody has done a google review already maybe then you go and ask them for video testimonials next time and you get them into that cycle. So it really, these are just tools for you to decide what is more important. So for us, primary importance right now is growing our Google reviews. That's what we wanna do. Second uh, option for me is video testimonials. So we send out Google uh, review testimonial requests first, and then for existing clients who are attending, you know, ongoing events or have other triggers, then we're requesting video. Does that answer your question, Priscilla? Yeah. So I think I would I would want both, but I'm going to be selective on the testimonials because I have some clients I think would be happy to do one or be willing to do one, and um, some maybe not so much. It might be intimidating to them. What, so I have an idea. Is that what you're talking yeah. About? Yeah. The video testimonies. I have an idea from interacting with them who I feel would do it and be willing to do it and not feel pressured, you know, of doing a video and um, some that I probably would be reluctant to ask. <laughs> um, but I would ask all of them for a review. Yeah, and you'd be surprised though. That's why I don't like to be involved in the <laughs> in the decision because I assign way too much weight to what people will or will not do. I'm not saying that your clients are like that, but for me internally, I'm like, well, so and so is not going to do it, right? But you never know unless you ask. So that's why I want to remove. Like, I need to remove Sunday from the process of asking for stuff because I get in my own way. And again, I'm not saying that you get in your way, Priscilla, I get in my way. So that's why I have to automate as much of it as possible. Um, and we define the trigger absent of what I know about the person and all requests will go out based on A, B, and C based on the, the goals that I want. So that's my recommendation is try and remove yourself out of the decision-making process. Because again, the more decisions we have to make, the more we hold up the process, okay? All right, I'm gonna, this is the reputation part. They are separate. I just wanna let you know that the native reputation um, review process, so asking for Facebook and Google My Business is going to be found in the reputation. All levels have access to that feature. And then if you are a premier uh, level access. You have access to our travel. I hit the wrong button. Sorry about that. You have access to our video pro manager feature, which this will give you access to seeing testimonials video. And I'm specifically talking video uh, testimonials that people have done. We have an automation that allows you to make the request, we have a funnel that allows you, and I'm gonna just show that just in case you guys may have missed the memo, um, but this is what it looks like. Is this feature, and so this says online travel boss, this obviously would say your business, this would have your logo up here, but they would fill out their information. And 
and then they would get the opportunity to create a testimonial for you. And so this goes to our video software. So the great thing about this software is, is that they record, upload, or use their phone to make the video, and then they don't have to send it to you. It's going to live within your account, and you'll get it right there. They'll get an email that lets them know that you sent that it was successfully sent, and then you get to approve or deny it based on what you think of it. And then once, if you approve, it, they get an email, and if they if you deny it, you uh, send them an email telling them why you denied it or what have you. But this is really pretty cool. I like this because this is kind of, and I can't, I have to, let me come off a video. Hold on a second. So here I'm on video. And then what's great about this too is the features you can prompt your clients to ask them specific questions. So as they're doing the video, these spe specific questions will come up so that they can answer the questions as we go. This for those, uh, like Priscilla mentioned, you know, some people are intimidated by video because they don't know what to say, right? And so right now they're being prompted. So they just have to look at the prompt and then they can answer the questions as they go. So this is kind of really cool. This is not really kind of cool. I really am excited to have this feature available for you all. I'm just going to kind of get to the um, it does require that you do about I think I'm, I may be stuck specific All right. question. so then I'm going to use the video and then once the video is published it then goes to a thank you page and lets them know that everything is okay um, and then they'll review, you'll get an email that lets you know. So those are the features that you have. The automation to, as along with this feature, it includes automation that will allow you to request the video. So you just need to set up when you want it, what's the trigger that's going to have people get the request for doing a video testimonial for you. So that's built in and then all the automation that thanks them for sending, you know, submitting their video. And then the, the great thing also about this feature for you too is, is the video will now show up automatically in your queue. Oh, and I, I don't know, I don't know what site, oh, this is actually my live site. What did I do demo? I don't know which site I did this in. Looks like I did it in the live site, so demo. Let's see if it's there. One of these locations, it I don't know if I did it in the demo or the live site. What happens is once you've once the person has approved, once the person has submitted the video, it'll show up here as a new video ready for you to approve. And then all of your approved videos will show up in the approve. So once you click on the approve button, it'll move to there and then you can download it. And what we would do with videos is we would add them to our site. Um, we like to add testimonials. We call it a, a, testi a testimonial wall, a video wall and videos will add it too. So we do a little bit more with our video testimonials than we do with our written testimonials written. We just want them to go straight to our site videos we'll add them we may cut them a little bit and then add them into facebook ads we'll add them on sales pages and the like all right that is all that i wanted to show you for this training so uh this is just a summary again of what you have available to you inside of your account if you're on the basic level you avail you have the reputation review for google and facebook reviews and if you're on premiere you've got the video pro all right, I'm going to stop sharing, and I think there, uh, I want to just open it up and see if you guys have any questions. No questions? No more questions? No? All right, I think, Tanya, you asked me a question. Priscilla, I want to make sure I answered your question. Did I get your question? Yeah, you, you answered it. Um, yeah, so... I might take myself out of the way and uh, allow them to do a video, ask them to do a video. Um, 
testimonial? Yep. And if they don't, then maybe you could then, I mean, I, there's several things that I, I like immediately when we're talking about this out loud that comes to mind. If your goal is to get, so ask yourself, what's, what's, what is it that I primarily want to get? Right now, the reason we want Google is because we're we're heavily focused on SEO right now. So we want to expand our SEO footprint. So Google My Business is our fastest path to help do that because it's natural, right? Um, but our secondary is video because we like to have that in video. We do a lot of video on YouTube. And so being able to use that video testimonial, doing a lot of ads too. So having video testimonial and using them in ads that's our secondary objective. So ask yourself, what do you want to do with it? And what are you in deficit of? If it's everything, then prioritize. And then what you could do is primary, go after objective A. Secondary, if they don't do it, do this, you know, do ask them for the, the review. So let's say video is your most important thing. Ask for the video for everybody. And then if they don't, you could do, if they don't do that, would you mind doing a review here? Like that could be a secondary objective. Like, so it doesn't have to always just be one. Maybe they do a video, then the next time you're putting them in automation, you know, you could check to see if they've done a video, like there's some tags you could do and then do a um, uh, written one. Like, so again, what's your objective based on that? That's what I would go after first when you're, when you have nothing, if you guys have nothing, Pick one of the objectives. Which one do you want? Written or video? If you want video, every single body that meets a criteria, ask for the video. Okay. Uh, I think my my primary focus right now is the review. And the videos are good to have because I can reuse those videos. Yes, but, absolutely. Yeah, but definitely I need the reviews. Yep. All, you know, and, and at this at this venture, all of it is great. Like if you just, again, my point of doing this training for you all is it's not a comfortable thing for me. So I assumed if it's not comfortable for me, there's somebody out there that it may also not be comfortable for. So based on that, let's, again, let's remove our uncomfortableness to the fact that you guys are amazing at what you do. You create amazing experiences. So just ask for, ask for the referral and ask for the testimonial written or video. It doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Um, uh, uh, uh Oh, now you said referrals. Now that's something that that's I a whole thought different about thing, that one. You should be asking for <laughs> referrals as well. <laughs> yep. Referrals. Like, I, I mean, it's a whole, it, it's, those are the things that I think are the most uncomfortable, like for me and for people, I think in general, right. Cause you're asking for something, right. You've already got them to open up their wallet, but now you still need them to do another thing, which is ask for a referral. Like that should be a part of your process. Ask for a testimonial. That should be a part of your process. So let's not make it um, uncomfortable by removing yourself out of it. And then you don't have to worry about it because it's just automatically happening. Okay. 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 So what I do, I don't do a lot of the gifts beforehand going on the trips mm -hmm. uh, because some of my trips are a little bit more costly and, and they're like, we don't want to wear a t-shirt. We don't need a t-shirt. We just want to go on this luxury trip and we want to dress up. But what I do is I started doing is sending a gift afterwards, like a keychain or something like that will remind them of the trip. If it's like a group trip. Now, yeah, let me make that distinction between group trips and fit. So for a group trip. And so um, I that'll also help them remember me. So um, what do you think about that? Tie the gifts to a testimonial. <laughs> ah, <laughs> okay. Right after the trip, right? Right after the trip, like, hey, you know, would you mind, uh, not even would you mind, here's a link to give us a testimonial and for your time, I'm going to send you this once we approve your testimonial. That's a good idea. I didn't think of that. That's why we're all great together. <laughs> we're great as a tribe. All right. All right, Tanya, you asked the difference between basic and uh, premier. So basic level, that's going to get you pretty much everything that you've already gotten, <laughs> which is the software. 
excuse me, it's going to get you the software. It's going to get you access to our free workshops that we do every month. Um, and, uh, that that's that's pretty much it, right? So pretty much what you've already experienced mm -hmm. is what you're going to get. With Premiere, yeah. um, we are now starting to go into marketing features and additional functionality that I'm gonna be delivering in automation or features. So for example, in just the last couple of weeks for Premiere, we've launched the Video Pro feature. We've, lost, we've launched the webinar automation feature that's available to our Premiere users. Premier users also get access to memberships and courses and our blog feature, I think are the three features that they also get access to. Um, and then you also in Premier get access to our VIP after our Sweet Success workshops that we host every month. I do a VIP session, you get free access to that VIP session. Okay. All right, and what about the mask? Because I know we spoke on masks before too. Is that we have discontinued thing? maps? We have discontinued huh? maps. So instead oh, of it? okay, yeah. So instead of having a separate maps program, we've just created the premier level, and we sort of combined the objectives of maps into the premier level. Oh, well, okay, okay. And um, I'm gonna ask you something about you just said something. Oh my goodness. Oh, memberships. What are what are what are memberships? Within so the, the... Let, me, let me show you that. I think it's a really okay. great question. And um, I will, um, hold on, let me share my screen. So inside of, you guys are a part of our membership right now. Um, you're part of our Travel Pro portal. And it's a, and what I really mean, membership and communities, I'm sort of using that interchangeably. So you see this here? This, this, are you seeing my screen? You see the travel? Yes, program? I do. We're all a part of this, right? And yes. this is a community. And so this feature functionality is what you would get access to in Premiere is being able to create your own community. Mm -hmm. And then inside of that community, you can also create, I, I know you may not be a, you're, you probably don't do courses, but you may think you may actually do courses and you just don't call them that, right? So let's say you do, um, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick on Priscilla because I know like when she's in the middle of promotion, she does like these series around um, the destination. And she, so she could create these as classes, as referrals, and then all of her River Cruise community could join this community and this is where stuff is published now. You'd say, well, I have a Facebook group for that. Problem is Facebook, take you down, bring you down. It's kind of really hard to organize stuff. You can't, like, it, it's, don't get me wrong. I have a Facebook group. Love it. I've had one for years. Um, but I really like the ability to control membership, communication in a way that is not dependent on the algorithm. Because the larger your communities get in Facebook, the least over the last several years, I've noticed the least that all everyone, they could at any time limit the exposure to this. So I want to be able to have my own community that controls that. So you guys can do this too. So that's one use case. I just used Priscilla as an example. Another use case is if you have like sub agents and you want to do courses for them to teach them a thing about your business and how you want things run as, the, as a sub to them, you can create your like an agency community. Um, for your sub agents and then publish content courses to them similar to a group so you can have posts you can have members you can have people pay for courses or not it could all be free or you can have paid so all this functionality is available to you when you um, are at the premier level go back to that um Priscilla use case again. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, Priscilla, the, what I would envision is, is that you could create a river, like a river cruise community um, or, you know, and I'm just picking on river cruises. I know that that was your, your thing, but if you're expanding, but you could create a client community of just clients, right? People have actually went on a trip with you. Um, and then, or people who are interested in a trip, it, it doesn't matter. You can define the who, but then you can you can create content 
in the form of a course or um, in the form, like I, th these are courses, you guys are familiar with these courses, right? But I'm thinking you do those destination, like your soulful destination series, you create yeah. a course that's like soulful. Like, what did you just do? Like last year, last yeah. fall, you were doing, um, that was France. Then I did, I did Portugal before then first I did France in general. Yeah. Then I did Portugal. Then I did France and I was just in there yesterday organizing a page for the video replays. Yeah. So, so I didn't even think about that. Post them all. in like, this could be like your soulful, like, what do you call them? Live the good life. France yep. edition, right? And then this could yeah. be a course here with that image that's here. And then inside, you could set it up as a course. And all the people who are a part of like, I would invite all your clients to be a part of your community, so that they get access to your replays and all the information that you want to do. So when you're in the middle of a promotion cycle, your promotion cycle could have all of the content as you're building it available as a course or even just as a discussion thread, right? So this is how we're using it. This whole use case of this private community different from Facebook is something that we're leveraging, like we're doing announcements here. Um, so we have two groups now. We have our Travel Pro Suite community and only our members of Travel Pro Suite are in this. And then we have a free community where we'll do all of our replays and all of our free promotional stuff will be in the free community. So that is married with our free Facebook group and then our travel pro suite community is only available and they all, and they have different, like these, these only have these uh, classes, but in our, and if you have purchased classes, you have access to those courses in your courses item. Okay. So, so this whole functionality is really great when you're ready to like, really take your marketing and lead generation. Like if you have like guides, I'd post all your guides here, like maybe in your free part. And this is where, because again, you control the narrative in your communities. Yeah. I'm looking to get off Facebook. I only created like for the last trip. Um, well, that was my first group trip. Um, I only created that community as a pop-up group just to, sh just to share information. Yeah. Um, but I really want to get away from it because I do have two Facebook groups and I just don't like how it's going. So I do want to get away from it because people are not seeing the post. You have to put everywhere or, or highlight or all of this stuff. So I'm like, nah, I need to move people away from Facebook. Yeah. I, I just recently, I mean, up until about, a month ago, I was really anti the Facebook group, but I obviously found software <laughs> and I'm working with um, that, that, that company to figure out how to reignite my group and start the engagement, but it's all algorithm driven, right? I don't right. want my communities to be dependent on an algorithm to do mm -hmm. visibility. So what I want to do is mm -hmm. be able to control the narrative of my own community. This is why we are really going to be pushing the growth of our communities internal to the system. Okay. Mm -hmm.